Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and here are all of the books that I ended up reading in April. So I ended up reading 21 books in the month of April, which I'm very excited about. That is my normal number for me. Um, so I'm going to tell you about all of the books that I read this month. So the first book that I'm going to be talking about is a book that I'm actually not going to give my opinion or feelings on because it's going to be in a dedicated rating vlog that will be out very soon for you to watch. Um, and that is called The Kiss by M. Robinson. I'm not going to tell you my rating or what I thought about it, um, but this is a friends to lovers college age romance and yeah it'll be in that vlog that'll come out very soon and you'll know my thoughts all about that i do have one book that i did not rate because it was for my eastern european class and i just i didn't feel like rating it for some reason i just didn't and that is the door by magda sasbo i'm pretty sure that's how you say it i'm sorry if i'm butchering that um but this is a a fiction novel all about a uh, hungarian woman after or during communist rule I don't remember, uh, <laughs> just basically about a Hungarian woman. I had to read it for my Eastern European class. I'm just telling y'all that I read it and I just didn't read it. As usual, we're going to be talking about these books from my least favorite to my favorite. So let's get into the rest of the books. First, we have Irik by Joanna Bell. I read this a part of a reading vlog, a weekly reading vlog. I'll link the vlog down below for you to watch if you want to know my in-depth thoughts at the time that I was reading it, my live reaction thoughts. Um, but this is a Viking time travel romance that I ended up giving 2.5 out of 5 stars to. It's very lackluster, unfortunately, and there were just parts of the book that didn't, I didn't feel like needed to be included. Um, the book jumps a lot from the present time period, like our time period, and then it jumps to our heroine when she time travels, like the time she's in when she's in the ninth century. And so it flip flops a lot. And the stuff that takes place in the present time, like we are in right now, I don't feel like was needed at all for the story. If they, if the author would have just kept only the Viking time stuff, it would have been so much better. I was really bored throughout most of this and I just didn't find the romance all that believable. And yeah, if you want to know more of my thoughts about it, go check out uh, the vlog link down below. Next we have Scarlet's Naughty Christmas by Max Watson. This is a little Christmas novella that I just picked up on a whim because I had it on my Kindle. I got it for free one time and you know what? I don't have to read Christmas books only during Christmas time. I can read them all year round if I want to. I don't mind. I don't care. This is a romance between a woman who works at like their local, her local mall as like the elf to the Santa during Christmas time so kids can come take pictures and Santa Santa's lap and everything. And she loves her job so much. She loves like the spirit of Christmas and giving joy to these kids. But every single Santa that this company hires is a drunk, gross man, like disgusting, horrible. So she's like, this is the last straw after the last one, like basically quit on these kids. It's like, this is the, this is the last straw I'm done after today, I'm going to quit. And so then the Santa that quits like during, or just leaves, he leaves, he gives up on these kids and just leaves through like halfway through the day. The replacement Santa comes and it's this hunky, charming dude that is actually pretty nice, that is not a drunk. And so Scarlett is like, hmm. <laughs> Uh, and it's just a very short, fun novella that I had a lot of fun with. Um, nothing good, nothing bad, really. It's just a mediocre novella for me, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next, I have Coming In From The Cold by Serena Bowen. This is a contemporary romance, and I actually really enjoy Serena Bowen's books, and so I think this is one of her earlier works. Um, so this book has a lot of tropes in it. It has Stuck In A Snowstorm, um, so that's also Forced Proximity, uh, One Night Stand To More, um, and a damaged hero. Um, he's also injured in this book. And there is a trope that not a lot of people like, and I'm going to tell you what it is because like most people don't like this trope. I didn't know the trope was in there. So if you don't want to know the specific trope that I want to talk about, just go until my hand is down, I guess. Um, but there is an accidental baby trope in this one, like through the book. So I read this book because I thought it had disability rep in it and it's been on a bunch of Goodreads lists as having disability rep in it, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> Our hero is a, uh, an Olympic skier. So that's something I found really cool. Um, and skiing was put in the book a lot. Our hero in here, he has worried his whole life that he has hunting, can't say that word ever. Huntington's, Huntington's disease because his mother has passed from it and um, his brother's in the hospital for it currently. So he's always worried that he's had it and so he's 
he has not let himself become really close to anybody because he thinks that he will die a painful death one day and who basically put pain on those who love him so he chooses not to love anybody in general to not put that pain onto somebody that he has felt from having his loved one his loved ones die from this disease so our hero and heroine at the beginning they're stuck in a snowstorm on this road they both have their own cars both their cars almost hit each other and then they get stuck in the snow and then they end up like um, going in the same car for warmth and everything they can't drive and it's just snowing everywhere they end up having a one night stand um, and then it like turns to uh, more because of that uh, trope that I talked about earlier I think that was the main catalyst and if like that didn't happen they would not be together and like I don't like those kinds of stories <laughs> like because of that one thing because of that only one thing that is like your spark for like okay I'll be with like it, no <laughs> Like, I just gave it three stars. It's not my favorite thing ever. I liked the characters individually. I just didn't like that little, like, trope in there that I talked about earlier. I didn't like how that was put into that. I'm normally fine with that trope. I know it doesn't bother me as some other people. I actually have a bunch of books that have that trope in it that I pretty much enjoy. But this one just didn't work for me in the fact that that was the main reason why the couple was together in the end. Like, that was the main spark for him realizing, oh... Yeah, not my favorite thing ever, but I really love Serena Bones writing, so check out her other books. I recommend doing that. <laughs> then we have When She Was Married by Ruby Dixon. This is book number two, a part of the Rizdiverse series. This is an alien romance series all about human women who were uh, abducted, by e abducted by evil aliens. And this other alien ends up kind of like rescuing them and buying them um, to put them on this planet that is basically off the grid because um, humans are a hot commodity and are illegal in uh, the universe that they're in. Puts all these women on this planet and gives them their own farm area to take care of and that's basically their job in life now is to take care of this farm um, and so each book is about a woman who is trying to find a husband um, because they are at risk of their farm being taken away from them by other aliens if they don't have a husband to protect them and help them take care of their farm and in this one specifically our heroine she decides to go to the local jail on the planet and just pretend she's buying one of them as a slave but in actuality she's trying to buy herself a husband so that uh, she can be safe on her farm <laughs> nothing too special about this one so far this is my least favorite in this risdiverse series the first book in this series is actually the next book that i'm going to be talking about which is when she's uh ready by ruby dixon and um this one is book number one in that series same plot as the first one basically the the plot is kind of reused and i don't really care <laughs> I like like I'm cool if it's reused. I love Ruby Dixon's writing and I find it so fun and enjoyable to read about um, So I don't really care if the plot is reused <laughs> um, This one this woman I honestly don't remember but she does not go to the jail to get somebody I don't remember but she has to get a husband too I liked this one a little bit more than the second one So I ended up giving this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars Then we have another alien romance book We have Alien Wanted by Julie K. Cohen So this book is another alien romance book obviously And this one is about our heroine She's a human She was taken from Earth and uh, she has been bought by this other alien to be his wife. But the day that he is supposed to uh, come pick her up to be his wife, she he, do he doesn't show up. And so our hero in here, he sees this girl, like her husband isn't coming to come pick her up or her soon to be husband, not, they're not married yet. Um, but like, he's not coming to pick her up. And the only other option for this woman is to go to the city brothel and so he's like I don't want this woman to go through that I will let her stay at my place for the night and he finds her really attractive and um he's just a super sweet hero um and just wants to make her really comfortable and wants the best for her and that's also in that vlog that I talked about earlier in this video I read that book in that one so my thoughts are kind of fuzzy on this one because I read this more towards the beginning of the month um so go check out that vlog for more of my thoughts but uh this was an okay alien romance so I just gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars then I have misadventures of a city girl by meredith wild and shell bliss this one is a romance where our heroine i think her boyfriend fiance just cheated on her and so she's like i want to go out into the mountains and live free for a month and so she rents this cabin in the mountains in california on her first night there she goes to find some like hot springs she's in the hot springs like alone and like doing some stuff and uh this mountain man who lives in the mountains comes upon her and uh finds her like that <laughs> and he's like uh what are you doing <laughs> and then they end up getting stuck in a snowstorm together because those hot springs are like right 
outside of his like right next door to his house almost and so uh he brings her to his house and they end up getting stuck in this snowstorm together and so it's like a one night stand to kind of like more in here he is a um ex-marine i want to say um so he has a lot of ptsd when it comes to like the big city she's from the big city um and so he's like very cautious of forming a relationship with her because he knows that he can never live in the city because of the, all the noise and the uh trauma or ptsd the city could spark in him i really like the mountain man trope so uh i found this one pretty enjoyable but i just ended up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars i just didn't really like the um, conflict in here, if that makes sense. Next, I have Wanna Bet by Talia Hibbert. I finished this one today before I started filming. And uh, this is a romance where uh, our heroine and hero, they ended up meeting, I think in college. And they had like basically like a one night stand. Our heroine in here, she has faced some kind of like family trauma. And so she doesn't do relationships at all. She doesn't do romantic relationships. She's kind of like a one done kind of girl because of the like, things that her mother put her through as a kid. You have to read about it to understand. Raul, our hero in here, he is infatuated by this woman, but he knows that he can't have anything more than more from her than a friendship. And so he agrees that after the one night stand, I just wanna be friends with you because either friends with you or we don't see each other ever again. So he's like, okay, I'll be friends with you. I really like you as a person. I want to get to know you. So it's literally years, I think like seven years later and he's still infatuated with this woman, but he knows that she will never like want more from a relationship and then this book starts out with our heroine uh her apartment gets flooded and so the, she calls her best friend raul to be like can i stay with you until my apartment's fixed and so it is a romance between the two of them because they're like in forced proximity with one another in this apartment and so they're forced to be in this close proximity with one another and like they finally let their like feelings out and I actually really like this one. I like this one more than the first one in this companion series, The Princess Trap. I like this one a little bit more. I again did not like how our heroine was acting towards the end and just like the conflict. I found it was kind of like pointless and just like, I, I much prefer Talia Hibbert's more recent books for sure, but this one was overall really enjoyable. So I'm thinking like a, a 3.5 or 3.75. I haven't like solidified my rating yet. Next, I have The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. I ended up reading this for my young adult literature class. Um, this one, if you don't know, is basically like the book that sparked young adult literature to what it is today. Um, and I found it really enjoyable. I've watched the movie a couple times because it's my mom's favorite movie of all time. And so uh, I finally read it for the first time. It's her favorite book of all time as well. I read it and then I rewatched the movie with her. We also, we found like a, um, a version of the movie where uh, they added more scenes into it. So it was really cool because my mom, she went like to the theaters to go see this when it first came out. And she was like watching it with me. She was like, that wasn't in the original. That wasn't in the original. So like, it was really cool because the editors just like put in extra scenes that they originally did not have in the original film that they put in there. Um, and it was very, very, very much like the book. It is the most like true adaptation for a book that I've ever watched before, which I thought was really cool. But yeah, I just ended up reading this for my young adult literature class. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. I just gave it four stars. I'll get my other young adult book out of the way that I read for that class, which is The Crossover by Kawame Alexander. This is a book of poetry, a uh, book of prose in here. So it looks like this. It's very much like The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. It gives me those same feelings and vibes with the writing and just like how lyrical and how it flows well together and how the individual poems really come together. So this is about Josh and uh, he has a twin brother and uh, they play basketball together. And this is just him and his brother, well, him specifically going through some things and his brother is getting a girlfriend and his father's going through some health issues. And just like, he just wants to play basketball. Like he wants to play basketball and some things in life are like um, having him stray from that. And uh, he does not want that, <laughs> but I really enjoyed this one. Uh, my only thing in here of me not giving it a five star is just like Josh in here has some pent up feelings that he like releases and not like the best way. I really wanted him to like talk out his feelings. I wanted him to express them, to talk about what was bothering him, why I was acting the way he was acting. I wanted him to talk it out and that never happened. And so I was a little bit disappointed, but this was an amazing book that I'm definitely going to be reading to my future uh, kids, future students. I'm very excited. This was an amazing book. I also have another YA lit text to talk about, which is Under the Mesquite by Guadalupe Garcia McCall. Um, this is another book of poetry. This one is really cool. I've never heard about this book before this point. This is just like the crossover with like the poems and everything in there. This one I feel like it has more of a lyrical 
writing style and our author in here she um i believe is also from mexico and so she puts a lot of of the spanish language into this book which i thought was really cool and it helped the book like flow really nicely it was very lyrical and beautiful to read about so this is basically a book about our main character named lupita and her story of how her family are immigrants from mexico and it was really cool and it also takes place in texas and so it's just really cool to read a book that takes place in texas because i very rarely read books that takes place in texas um that i feel like truly like are authentic like settings you know like texas settings and like this is it and so i really like this one you get to like see her journey of her like growing up in her family and her being from mexico and america like she calls both of them home and um i really enjoyed this one and this is definitely one i want to buy a physical copy of for my library collection. Then I have Getting Schooled by Christina C. Jones. This was a buddy read that I had with Heather from Hea Booktubes. Uh, she picked this book out and I've been wanting to read this for a while because I forgot like that this hero in here um, is an amputee and so I can add this to my disability recommendation videos. I really enjoyed this one. This was really fun to read with Heather. Um, I believe she gave it five stars. My only thing is like it's not my favorite romance in the world so I just gave it a four star but it was really good, really fun to read about. This is about a hero and a hero and our hero is um, going to these college classes and our heroine is kind of like the TA for that class and uh, they immediately butt heads and they banter all the time and they get each other in trouble all of the time and at first they can't stand one another because they're really attracted to one another and she has a boyfriend at the beginning of this book um and he is a i don't want to say bad words but like he not he not a good person um and he treats her pretty badly and so uh our hero and heroine are just like having these pent up angsty feelings for one another and it finally gets released at one point in the book and oh my gosh <laughs> when they are together for the first time it is like fire it is fire it is amazing it is a steamy like is good is good so overall i really just want it was a really fun romance that i really recommend that i had so much fun reading with heather then i have a lady by midnight by tessa dare this is book number three i believe in the spindle cope series this one i i really enjoyed this one is about our heroine um who lives in spindle cove if you didn't know spindle cove is a city no like a town that a heroine from the first book like created with her father it's a town full of like spinsters and women who want to escape society and just take a break from society Society. And so our heroine, she has been living in Spindle Cove for quite a while and she is like the piano teacher of the town and she's also an orphan her whole life. She's wondered where she comes from um, and this is her romance with, he's like the, I think like general, general question mark of the, uh, like the army that's in Spindle Cove. He has these pent up longing feelings for this woman. They like have to at one point pretend to be engaged to one another. Um, so that was a pretty fun experience i really like that when they're in historical romances because i don't see that a lot of historicals where they pretend to be engaged and i find whenever they have that trope in there it's really fun to read about so i want this one to be really enjoyable i really recommend reading all the previous books before you read this one though i give some context to this story then i have fire in his chaos by ruby dixon this is book number eight i believe in the fireblood dragon series if you don't know about this series this is a post-apocalyptic romance series where um on earth one day a rift opened up in the sky and dragons started flying uh into earth and decimating the entire planet except for a few a few camps here and there that have survivors in them dragons are still a thing on the planet and uh, these people don't know that they have human forms like they can shift into a human form this book starts out with our heroine i don't remember her name at the moment but whenever the rift first opened up she was burned very severely from these dragons that flew through the sky she has scars all over her face and she's an amputee uh she lost her arm the first day that the dragons flew through the rift and so she's always called herself ugly and she's not worried about men hitting on her or unwanted men hitting on her um, because of how ugly she is or she says she is she's part of this program that's part of this uh fort city um and she has to like go outside of the city every single day uh to collect some stuff and she has to have a guard with her every time while she's out there one day like a guard tries to force himself on her and then a dragon comes and saves her and then claims that that is his mate each book also has mates in them if you did not know i love the mate trope and i found this one to be 
super fun so I just gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. My only 4.5 star from this list is Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. If the name of this author sounds familiar to you that's because this is the same author who wrote Archer's Voice that I and many other people in the romance community love. So this is a romance I can't tell you all that much about because like I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> but this book is basically about Crystal and Gabriel and both of them have tragic and traumatizing pasts. Uh, Crystal uh, comes from a home where her mother abandoned her with a somewhat abusive father and Gabriel um, is the survivor of a kidnapping when he was a kid. So it's years later after the things they've been through. Crystal now works as a stripper. She works at a strip club and Gabriel goes in one day to the strip club with the intent of talking to Crystal about helping him with a problem that he has. Uh, when he was kidnapped, he was molested by the man who took him and so he's had a very very hard time getting close physically with women because of that he has uh ptsd around it um and so he asks crystal if he can hire her to help him be close to women not even in a intimate way kind of like a just touching me just touching my hand holding my hand just like being in a close vicinity with me just like i need to like just do those things at first like I just need you to help me feel comfortable being around women. So that's how this book starts out. And I can't tell you even more than that because that would spoil it, I feel like. Um, but this book was very emotional. It deals with a lot of hard subjects in here. There is assault, sexual assault, um, pedophilia. There's a lot to unpack in this book and this is definitely not for the faint of heart. So if you're wanting a, a, a fun, cutesy read, this is not it. This is quite serious and deals with a lot of serious subjects that I felt like Mia Sheridan did a pretty well job talking about and addressing. My only thing for not giving it a full five stars is just like, again, it's not my favorite thing ever. I only give like my favorite things ever, like five stars. And I I just, I at one point just got really uh, sick of how stubborn our heroin was in here. Uh, so uh, I just ended up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I also want to say that this book is very exciting for me uh, because this book is going to be a traveling book with some of my booktube friends and we're going to be or I'm going to be sending it out in a couple of days uh, to send it to one of my friends who is going to be annotating it because I already annotated quite a bunch in here um, and so uh, then I'm gonna send it off to my next friend in the lineup and then she's gonna annotate it and then she's gonna send it to the next person and the next person and the next person and then in the end after everyone's read it and annotated it it's gonna come back to me and I get to have this in my library which I am very 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 excited for this is gonna be an amazing experience I'm super excited okay we're going on to my five star reads I think this is the month where I have the most five star reads let me see. I don't know, I have four five-star reads in here. So it's been a while since I've had that many. Um, first, we're gonna talk about Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. Um, here is the beautiful step back in here. Uh, this is book number, I believe, eight in the Maiden Lane series. I have not read the series in order. I know that. Um, I read book number seven, the one before this one, um, before I got into this one. But I just wanted to read this one so bad because it sounded so good. This is a romance between Lady Phoebe and uh, James Trevelyan. Lady Phoebe is blind and James Trevelyan is her um, bodyguard. And um, he also, I think, was like uh, wounded in battle or war and so he has a limp and has to walk with a cane um and so there's disability rep on both sides here which i've never read a book other than probably sick kids in love that i love so much um where both the characters have a disability which i love and i feel like <laughs> there needs to be more books like that so i don't want to get too much into this because i feel like it could uh spoil some things uh but yeah this is just a romance between phoebe and her bodyguard james trevelyan and her starting to realize like, oh my goodness, this man who's been like my bodyguard for a while, who I've been in close proximity with, that I've been bantering for quite a long time, he's like perfect for me. And it's also an age gap in here, and that's what James like has a uh, serious time like struggling with, is like, she's so young, I'm so old, and she he doesn't believe that he deserves her uh, because of all of the things that he's been through and because of how old he is. And so she has to like try to tell him like, I am in love with you, I don't care about anything else. And I... <laughs> I love that so much. This was so good. One of my favorite historicals of all time now. Next I have Wicked Abyss by Crescent Cole. This is book number 17 in the Immortals After Dark series. I'm all caught up in the series which I'm very excited about. So this one is about our hero who um, is basically like the ruler of hell and um, because of this he's like taking on like 
demonish kind of like stereotypical devil characteristics like he's had uh, red skin he has the wings he has the barbed tail and everything and horns and our heroine in here is actually a fae princess I think and um, she's been cast out from like the um, the realm that she was supposed to rule one day because her parents put her in arranged marriage with this king and so he exiles her and she ends up working at like Disneyland or Disney World as one of the princesses there. There um some sorceresses, sorcerers, sorceresses find her and um bring her to this devil man um because he has been looking for her because she may or may not be the reincarnation of his mate who uh, has put him through the ringer and so he really wants to pay her back give her payback for what she did to him in the past and she has no idea what's going on because she doesn't remember anything from her past life and so he's trying to punish this woman who has no idea like who this man is he basically kidnaps her and keeps her in his castle it's very hades and persephone-esque which i love i love hades and persephone stories and this is very much like that i love this one it's my top one of my top five in the series i love this one i know that summary is probably a little jumbled but you know what you can go read the goodreads summary <laughs> If I confuse you, go read the actual summary. <laughs> um, but I love this one so much and I just felt like this was a great book to end the series off for right now. Um, so yeah, I gave it five stars. Okay, we have my two favorite reads of the month. First, I'm going to be talking about Just a Heartbeat Away by Cara Bastone. Oh my gosh, y'all, this book is so good. So this is another age gap romance. It's a contemporary romance and this is a romance between um, our heroine here um, and his son's old preschool teacher. His name is Sebastian and he has, I believe a six-year-old son. He's a single father, he's a widow. Oh, he's widowed, a widow. Is widow only for women? I've always wondered that. Uh, he's a widower. Is that the right term? I don't know. <laughs> um, so his wife uh, passed and when his wife passed, um, Via, our heroine in here, was his son's preschool teacher and she kind of helped him in making up lists and finding him the support that he needs to be a single father now. But he hasn't talked to her or they haven't talked to each other since uh, his son had her as a teacher. So it's years later and um, they, I believe, have both moved and um, they haven't spoken to each other since and then they come across each other because she ends up working as the guidance counselor at his son's new school. And um, he ends up working at like the lunchroom whenever, like he's some parent duty in the lunchroom, like he helps kids with lunch. Um, he has his own like job, but he like comes to school every day to help with giving kids lunches. So this is an age gap romance that is so good because the whole time he's like, he's like, I'm like 40, I don't remember, like 40 something. And she's like 26 and he's like, no he's like he's like no 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 no. he's kind of like james trevelyan from the other book that i talked about he thinks that like she deserves a way younger more put together guy and like not a man who already has a kid and has all this baggage from his past like marriage and everything and all she wants is to be with him and love him and she loves his son so much and she loves kids and like this is the kind of teacher that I want to be like like in here she's not a teacher she's a guidance counselor but the way that she feels about children and teaching children is like ugh, I love it I love it that's the way I feel as well this book is so slow burn and amazing it is it is so good if you've not read this book yet please do if you love age gap romances read this one for sure and lastly I'm going to be talking about my favorite book of the year so far which is Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the third book a part of the Brown Sisters series that I am in love with, that I love so much. This book is about Eve Brown and she is kind of like a trust fund baby. Uh, she's grown up with a trust fund. Her family is very wealthy, but she's never been able to hold a job. She's 26, I believe, and she's never been able to keep a job for, job for a long period of time. And so at the beginning, her family kind of has like an intervention with her and is like, uh, you need to find a job. Uh, and until you find one for you and like keep it stable for a year like you're not gonna have any money from us so after that conversation she goes to find a new job and she ends up across this bed and breakfast this bnb &B, and they're trying to find a new chef and jacob here our hero is the owner of that bnb &B. right when eve like walks into the uh 
interview room he immediately does not like her because uh she is not put together very well she is not prepared for the <laughs> for the interview at all and he likes order and cleanliness and just organization and eve looks like to be none of those things um and so she kind of like inserts herself into his life into this b and b and oh my gosh this book is perfection like perfection amazing a beautiful beautiful read and just like hilarious too like i love this book so much it has everything that i love in this this also has disability rep because jacob is autistic and um i love this book also because like eve is trying to uh discover things about her own self when it comes to autism and like uh learning more about it and everything and i love the talk of that in this book and overall this book is just perfection and amazing and if you have not read this book yet or this series yet what are you doing with your life do it now <laughs> so there you have it those are all of the books that i ended up completing in the month of april please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all mm -hmm.